So why are we not talking about the reality of these Nephilim, the ancient giant humanoid skeletons? Uh, before I go into this, uh, okay, everybody, you know, most of you know I'm Canadian, I'm American, I'm also Greek, and I'm, I'm, I live in Athens, Greece, that's a long story. But there's mountains around here, and uh, after we had some very bad forest fires, and the uh, forests were burned up over these uh, tall mountains, one of them being Bendeli, that's where they took the marble that made the, uh, the white marble that uh, they constructed the Parthenon, the Acropolis of Athens with, they were able to find, uh, the archaeologists and uh, cosmologists were able to find squashed skeletons, squashed, of uh, animal, uh, animal remains, like horses, donkeys, goats, humans. They even found giant humans like this thing uh, squashed, and they uh, figured that it must have been some kind of a devastating flood or earth change, I don't know, asteroid strike, whatever, something that caused a massive type of a uh, mudslide or a flood because the horses, for example, or the goat and the sheep could not run away. Uh, it was so sudden that these animals that were quite uh, able to run quickly, faster than humans, like sprinting to a run to save themselves, could not run. And they were all squashed and um, piled up at, at a place where the uh, material, the debris, uh, of, of flow, the flow of the debris squashed them into a certain area around the base of a mountain, you know. And uh, at that came after the, uh, the trees were burned down. So uh, they quickly did away with them. Nobody was able, they, did, they didn't put them in any natural history museum. By the way, there's only one silly little natural history museum in Athens, and that's by Wul Andris, a shipping family, and uh, it's a private museum. So we're lucky we have it. It's like a small thing, uh, one story thing. They've got like a, one dinosaur. I think they have a triceratops in there. Um, so a lot of butterflies and insects. But, you know, that's it. And who knows where they've taken these things, these giants. Um, there are a lot of um, a lot of these anthropologists and cosmologists and archaeologists that come, uh, astronomers, geologists that come on, uh, you know, national televisions, uh, television channels and say that they saw them and they don't know where they've been taken to. They've been just swift off. Nobody knows. The government took them and, uh, you know, these specialists came and took them away. Nobody knows where they are. For example, to uh, uh, research them, to uh, do DNA analysis, nothing. Uh, but we did have, I did have, and I made a video on that, concerning the squashed skeletons of the animals uh, and the you know, giants that were found in this area of Pendeli called Drafi, and um, around uh, Dau, Dau ben Pendeli, Drafi, they found these huge skeletons. Now, going back to, um, again, you know, these were found in uh, um, Los Angeles, California. This is an article having to do with the uh, remains of race of giants in Guadalupe, New Mexico. And... Um, about 200 miles southeast of Las Vegas. And this is one of the Smithsonian pictures of what, how big they were. Okay, this is, of course, when nobody knows where they took this because they, they just whisk them off somewhere so that people don't uh, have uh, any ideas of uh, asking questions and perhaps uh, rewriting history, I don't know. So why are we not talking and learning about all this? Why is no one allowing us to research this? Because, you know, this is referred to in the Old Testament, the uh, flood, the Genesis giants, the Nephilim, the six-fingered, six-toed giants that were before the flood and even after the flood. We even know that the, the young David, uh, who uh, saved Israel with a one-to-one -one battle with the Goliath, he was one of the giants and he had five brothers that were just like him from Gad, and uh, 
uh, they were huge, six fingered, six toes. So they, they were round, you know, the Philistines were that huge. So uh, this is on Humans Are Free by Richard Enos, and it's by Alexander Light. So if you step back and look, truly look with eyes open at the way human history has been managed in recent times by the established order, you'll see an unmistakable pattern. A uh, certain percep perception has been pushed, selectively constructed from Darwin's The Origin of Species, the notion that the human race evolved up through the apes, in an unbroken linear pattern of growth and adaptation, predicted on random genetic mutations, and addition additionally, that the human race, as well as we know it, is the only intelligent species to ever inhabit the planet, and has never been in direct contact with intelligent species of any other kind. As I'm saying this, I have to make my, a note to myself to talk about the ancient Greek um, uh, historians who wrote about the humans that were on Earth before we had a moon. Uh, before Earth had a moon, we call her Selene in Greek, as the name of the moon is Selene. And these people that were on Earth before the moon used to live in the Peloponnese of Greece, around Argos. Uh, Arcadia, and uh, they were called the pre-Selenites. Uh, uh, um, so they were pro-Selenites. They were they were before the moon. They were here before the moon uh, was uh, orbiting around our Earth. So I have to look. I have to make. I just made a note to myself to make a research that because it's very interesting. After all, it has to do with our history. Um, now, one of the very few pictures of a, an actual giant skeleton survived has been unearthed in the gold mine in Rosa, Montana, in Romania, just recently, December 13, 1976. And this huge thing measures 32.8 feet in height. That's 10 meters, 10 meter high humanoid. Testimonials and evidence from the past that don't contradict that perception of our history are commonly accepted as fact. Nobody seems to be challenging, for example, the notion that mastodons or dinosaurs once roamed the earth. So challenging the norm, what about testimonials and evidence from the past that challenges perception of our history? Say, for example, a native North American tribe claiming that their ancestors regularly dealt with giants. And we know that about Lovelock Cave and, of course, most of the Native American, North American tribes the, that's what they, uh, they have legends of. Now, stories of this nature are certainly considered to be true history by the people of the tribes themselves, but of course, when they are talked about in our society, they're relegated to the status of legend, myth, or folklore. Now, let, let's took, look at an example from a New York Times article from 1902. Giant skeletons found. Archaeologists to send expedition to explore graveyards in New Mexico, where bodies were unearthed. Los Angeles, California, February 10, 1902. Owing to the discovery of the remains of a race of giants in Guadalupe, New Mexico, antiquarians and archaeologists are preparing an expedition further to explore that region. This determination is based on the excitement that exists among the people of a scope of country near Mesa Rico, about 200 miles southeast of Las Vegas, where an old burial ground has been discovered that has yielded skeletons of enormous size. Luisiana Quantina, on whose ranch the ancient burial plot is located, discovered two stones that bore curious inscriptions, and beneath these were found in shallow excavations the bones of a frame that could not have been less than 12 feet in length the men who opened the grave say the forearm was four feet long and that in a well-preserved jaw, the lower teeth ranged from the size of a hickory nut to that of the large, largest walnut in size. The chest of the being is reported to having a circumference of seven feet. Quintana, who has uncovered many other burial places, expresses the opinion that perhaps thousands of skeletons of a race of giants long extinct will be found. This opposition is based on the traditions handed down from the early Spanish invasion that have detailed knowledge of the existence of a race of giants that inhabited the plains of what now is eastern New Mexico. 
Indian legends and carvings also in the same section indicate the existence of such a race. And uh, the mainstream newspaper article speaks of the discovery of giant skeletons that could not have been less than 12 feet in length with uh, aplomb. At that time, it seems such events were not met with the rapid skepticism they are today. It's only after the authority swoops in and takes possession of them and then hides or destroys the physical evidence, such as the giant bones discovered above, that their narrative of skepticism and discrediting of, night of native legends takes place. I would like to draw your attention to the fact that landowner Luciana Quintana expects to be able to find thousands of skeletons based on the history, historical information passed down from native tribes during early Spanish invasions that have detailed knowledge of the existence of a race of giants that inhabited the plains of what now is eastern New Mexico. The tone again reinforces that this information was accepted as history, not legend. It was fact. Stories of giants are ubiquitous. Such histories are not the isolated imag imaginings of one Native American group either. The article alone details similar testimony from the Choctaw, the Comanches, the Navajo, the Manta, and the Paiutes. But not only them. It's worldwide. The point is that the tribe, and worldwide also, that they're being taken and hidden somewhere or destroyed. Now, the point is that the tribes whose histories bring them back to the time when these giants were to have existed all give remarkably consistent testimony, not only of their existence, but also of their appearance, customs, and behaviors. And most of these giants were also man-eating tribes. And we have stories and legends of these in, uh, of the Cyclops in ancient Greek mythology. And uh, let's go back to, for example, uh, Ulysses. And uh, the fact that he had to flee, you know, he had to uh, uh, get the Cyclops drunk and then uh, somehow escape from him. Okay, they, he was a man, they were man-eating uh, giants. Now, uh, why are we not open to view these claims as historical fact the way we do with the more uncontroversial data about the past we are providing with, we are provided with, for only one reason, the well-established discomfort of cognitive dissonance, a temporary mental anguish that comes from having the perception of reality we're born into threatened in our minds. And our... Uh, Authority uses this phenomenon to deepen the programming of their control perception using fear, ridicule, shame, and other thoroughly researched social and cultural microtone te techniques to keep us on the straight and narrow. Now, what about President Abraham Lincoln and what he said, what he observed? This is very, very serious. We have to remember what Lincoln said. But before Darwin's work on the origin of species was slowly co-opted and transformed into a random godless universe in the early 20th century, it's quite possible that people openly accepted the possibility that giants did exist in North America at some point in our past. Certainly this reflection on Niagara Falls by Abraham Lincoln in 1848 reveals an open-eyed, serene knowledge of the presence of giants in Earlier, an earlier time in North America. Quote, this is what he said, quote, it calls up the indefinite past when Columbus first, saw, first sought the continent, this continent, when Christ suffered on the cross, when Moses led Israel through the Red Sea, nay, even when Adam first came from the hand of his maker, then as now, Niagara was roaring here. The eyes of that species of extinct giants whose bones fill the mounds of America have gazed on Niagara. I'm, as I'm saying this to you, I'm, I'm, I, my hair is standing on end. This is amazing what he said. The eyes of that species of extinct giants, he's told, talking about the Nephilim, whose bones fill the mounds of America have gazed on Niagara as ours do now. Contemporary with the whole race of men and older than the first man. Niagara is strong and fresh today as 10,000 years ago. The mammoth and mastodon, now so long dead, that fragments of their monstrous bones alone testify that they ever lived, 
have, grazed, have gazed on Niagara, end quote. He's not just talking about the mammoth and Mesta, he's also talking about the whole, uh, with the whole race of men, older than the first man, okay? Uh, it's not just mammoth and mastodon. It's talking about the giants that were there, filling the mounds. Because, of course, the mammoth and mastodons were not burying each other in mounds. <laughs> that would have been something with their little claws. And then kicking the, <laughs> kicking the dirt over their, you know, their fellow mastodons and uh, mammoths. No. It's the mounds and uh, the humanoid giant Nephilim skeletons that are buried there. And we have this picture uh, of the 47-inch human femur in the late 1950s during road construction in southeast Turkey in the Euphrates Valley. Uh, that's around where we've had the recent earthquake, the earthquakes there at, on the top of the Euphrates River uh, origin. So many tombs containing the remains of giants were uncovered. At two sites, the leg bones were measured to be about 120 centimeters. That's 47.24 inches. Joe Taylor, director of the Mount Blanco Fossil Museum in Cross Brighton, Texas, was commissioned to sculpt this anatomically correct enter the scale human femur. This giant stood some 14 to 16 feet tall and had 20 to 22 inch long feet. His or her fingertips with arms to their sides would be about six feet above the ground. The biblical record in Deuteronomy 3.11 states that the iron bed of Og, king of Bashan, was nine cubits by four cubits, or approximately 14 feet long by six feet wide. So that's how big the king of Bashan was. Um, now, Genesis 6, there were Nephilim giants, that is, in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God... Angels, question mark, came in unto the fallen angels, of course, came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. Now, like Lincoln was familiar with the histories of many of the native tribes of his time, there's a recognition on Lincoln's part here that the existence of Nephilim giants' bones, a plenty in burial mounds in America, is as well accepted as the existence of mammoths and mastodons. The reason that many people today do not believe in the giants of the past is a result of efforts to remove the public site from the public site the physical evidence of giants as part of the larger effort to remove the physical evidence of anything that does not fit the controlled perception of human history. And the reason they're trying to desperately, so desperately to preserve this perception, simply stated, and without getting into details that have been elaborated upon in some of my previous articles, this perception of our human history leads itself best to our being controlled and enslaved by our authority. So what do you think about all this? Why are they doing this? Why are they hiding all this? There is, though, a museum in Ecuador, from what I understand, that has an exhibition of giant human Nephilim skeletons. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today more of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition 
and the community around our church. Thank you.